Hello all. Welcome to another episode of Learn with AW, Learn AWS with me. Today we will take a use case associated with private subnet inside a VPC. Most of the companies when designing their systems use the combination of private and public subnets in the same VPC. This is standard process when it comes to securing your DBs or backend instances kind of things. The same VPC can have both the public subnets and the private subnets. Let us take a scenario uh, of a use case. You join a new organization that is in a banking sector. Also, it can be a health sector or in, in fact, it can be any sector today. When you get an access uh, to AWS, you will find that all these two instances don't have the public IP. Well, you have taken the AWS training. You are pretty well aware that there is a public IP and a private IP and also aware that there is a public subnet and a private subnet. The question is, how do I really connect to the private IP? And your colleague says that, hey, we use a tool called as OpenVPN. And by using this tool, we try to connect it to all of our private IPs, of course, using a PEM file. Now, how did your system means configure OpenVPN? How do you basically connect to the OpenVPN? And also, in other words, connect to your private IP is what I'm going to show you today as part of this lesson, okay? To begin with, let us go to our AWS console. And in this AWS console, let's go to running instances. Here, let's launch um, an instance. Please remember, I am in Frankfurt region. Uh, it doesn't matter which region you are for this lab. Uh, so let's launch uh, AWS EC2 machine. And we go to marketplace here, and we try to search for open VPN. We choose the first one. Remember, it's called Open VPN Access Server. We select this one. And you can click on Continue. Now, please note here that it basically says that you have to select T2 uh, small machine, which is not really the case. It is not compulsory that you have to select this machine. Uh, you can basically uh, select T2 micro also. You just need to be careful. If you do select T2 uh, T2 machine here, then uh, it, it, it can be possible that you might be built for this extra. So just be careful. Click on T2 micro. Let me remove the annotation symbol. Let me choose T2 micro. Next, configure the instance. Now, I, I want to make sure that it's launched in my public uh, subnet. So I choose this one. I choose SSM role to be installed on this machine by default and I click on next. <clears throat> Storage looks good. Give a name and then you give open VPN server. Okay. The important thing to note here is <clears throat> when you come to the security groups, <clears throat> because of the AMI you have chosen, by default, all of this field is populated. And it's very, very important that you don't remove any of this because it is required for OpenVPN to run. I'm going to create a new uh, security group uh, and not do anything here. What is populated looks fine for me. <clears throat> I'm going to click review and launch. When I click on launch, because I have SSM, I don't really need a key pair. I'm going to log, log into this machine using SSM from the Chrome console. So I click on launch instance. Let's wait for this machine to get launched. And it's gonna take some time to get launched because also if you're launching this for the first time, it's gonna take some time to launch. This does the reason is it uh, is getting your machine from the marketplace. So it might take a bit more time to launch compared to your normally C2 machine, which you are launch using AWS AMI. Now that this machine is launched, let me connect to this machine using session manager. Now it's giving me some error that it's not able to, I'm not able to connect. So let me wait for some time. Yep, after some time, I should be able to connect to this machine. And I mean, some time is more than like 30 seconds. Once I'm inside this machine, please remember, you're not logged into the machine using either EC2 user or Ubuntu user. This machine, uh, this uh, login is basically, if you type who am I, <clears throat> it doesn't run, it's a session. Uh, SSM is a session. So what you have to do is you can do sudo su open VPN. For this AMI, this particular AMI, that is open VPN AMI, 
the user to log into this machine would be OpenVPN. This is similar to EC2 machines. Uh, if you launch an EC2 machines with Air Amazon AMI, then the username would be EC2-user. If you launch an Ubuntu machine, it will be Ubuntu or root. Similar way, if you launch this OpenVPN uh, machine, then the username to log into this machine is OpenVPN. Now I'm going to lo log into this one. It says, uh, okay, let me just make sudo su because then it becomes root. When I do this, it asks me to, like you can see, it asks me to accept an agreement. I'll type yes. And everything over here can be default. Of course, you can change it. It is more about a configuration page, pages, what you want to do, like TCP port, uh, where do you want to run your instance, what is the web UI port that you want, so on and so forth. Everything you can keep it as default. There is no issues with it. Once this finished configuration uh, is finished, it will basically launch your OpenVPN server on this machine, which we will see in a few minutes. Okay. So if you see if you see the output of this, there is an admin UI and then there is a CentOS UI. Well, you can click on this U URL and you will get this error like here. Now I'm going to copy this and go to Safari and paste it. And I'll click on Show Details and go to the website. And I'll go inside this website. You can do the same on Chrome. I just don't get the option, so it's fine for me. You might get advanced, you can click on advanced and it'll here show you like uh, proceed with it and then you click on that, no issues. So it is asking me uh, to log in to the OpenVPN with a username and password. So we have to set a username and password. Like I mentioned, the normal username that we use to log into this machine is OpenVPN. So what I will do is I will, I will say sudo password OpenVPN. And it's asked me for a password. I'm going to give a password. You can give any simple password, like for example, OpenVPN123, that is what I gave. And now let me go back to Chrome and let me use this one, OpenVPN, and then use the same password, OpenVPN123. Not now, I will agree the license, and then I am logged into OpenVPN. Now, what does it really mean? What really happened is this is a VPN that is running on your public instance uh, that is in a public subnet. Now associated with this, you can use this as a VPN service to log into a private instance, which is, which is inside the same VPC. So let's see how we can do it. Let me go to my EC2 machines. Let me launch a machine. This time it is a simple Amazon Linux machine, T2 micro and when I launch this machine, I'm going to use my uh, private subnet. I'm just zooming in here. Uh, if you don't have a private subnet, you can go ahead and create a private subnet uh, in VPC. If you're not aware of it, leave a comment below in the video. I'll try to explain you how you can create a private subnet. So now I give it an SSM role and then let me add a storage tag. Here I'm going to name name. I'm going to give private subnet. EC2 incidents, okay? Awesome. I choose a security group. Um, I have a default security group, which allows SSH permission. It all looks good. I'm just double checking if, uh, if I have chosen the subnets properly. So let's launch this machine. And when I launch this machine, I have a key pair and looks good. So let me wait for this machine to get launched. If you click on this machine, you can actually see that there is no public IP for this machine. It only has private IP. The only way this machine can be communicated now is if you have the OpenVPN profile on your OpenVPN tool, and I'll show you how to do it in a minute. So, yep, it is good. It is up and running. Now, OpenVPN server is running, uh, but you need to install the OpenVPN on your laptop. So let's go to OpenVPN, VPN download. And let's wait, and then we go to the do community downloads. Uh, you can go to OpenVPN, get OpenVPN, and then you come scan. You click on MacBook. If it is Windows, click on Windows. The steps are the same. If it doesn't matter which one it is, 
let's wait for it to get completed yes now i go here i double click i do the installation of open vpn i am unzipping it it is asking me here i'm going to double click on this i agree for all the terms and conditions and i'm going to install open vpn on my machine now just by installing this OpenVPN, it is not really connected to the OpenVPN that you have installed on your EC2 machine. So you have to connect this one. So I'll show you how to do it. And let's go here. I'll click on this one. It was on my application, so I could uh, find it in the launch pad. Once this OpenVPN is uh, the browser opens or the small window opens, close this one, click on agree. Yes, and it asks you for a URL. Uh, now there is two ways that you can do it. You, you can also do a file import. So in your company, they might give you a profile for you and they will ask you to upload it here. If you're doing it for the first time, of course, I'm showing you it's for the first time, so you can do it the, the, this way, what, how I'm showing. Your in your company, especially if they're already using OpenVPN, they would definitely be uh, sharing you a profile and you can upload it here. So for here, let me go and copy this URL. And let me paste here. Let me remove this HTTPS so it's, it doesn't come twice. Looks good. I click on next and it asks me for a confirmation. And of course, it asks me for a username and password. Like I shared with you, this is the password I have set. It doesn't matter. I'll change it after this video, but you can set a simple password. That's what I'm going to show you. Click on import. But remember, if you ch if you had changed your port by any chance during the installation of OpenVPN that we just saw, you have to mention the port here. If not, it's going to take the default port. Okay. I click on import and accept. So it's going to import a profile for you. And now it's all set. So how do we test it? Let's go back to our EC2 machine. This machine, like I shared with you, doesn't have a public IP at all. Now this is the case that you would see when you have joined in your company. This machine doesn't really have public IP and they would tell you to download a VPN and by using this VPN, you will be able to connect to this machine. And how did they do that is what we just saw, the whole process. Now, how to connect it is pretty straightforward. Copy the internal IP like you always do. Go to the terminal. Let me expand this a bit more for you. And in this terminal, I basically have my PEM file. So, EC2 user. And now if you see, I just want to mention you that if you really see, I, I'm not connected to the VPN at this moment. So let me try to log in and it we will not be able to log in because there is no inbound connection of internet. That is basically, there is no way that the internet can reach to this machine at this moment, even though the machine status is really good. Now you can also try to ping it and see how it behaves. You can basically see that there is a timeout happening on this machine that clearly tells us that you can't reach this machine uh, as of now. Now I'll click on connect and it will ask me for a password. Uh, now remember guys, like I said to you, in your company, they might give you a profile file and you upload it. So it might not be required to give a password every time. So there are two ways you can do it. And this is one of the way I'm showing you. Now that you can see that I'm connected, now, because it's connected, now from my laptop, I should be able to access the machine. Okay, now let's try to log into this machine using our PEM file and let's see what happens. And yes, I click on yes. And I am able to log in inside this machine. To double check this, I'm just gonna copy this one. I'm gonna paste it here. You can see that this is the machine I'm connected. And that's how this VPN helps you to connect to any private uh, instances in your VPC. Things to note here, guys, is that you are basically connected uh, to the VPN that is running on your public subnet. And then by using that, you are able to connect to your machines that are running your private sub running in your private subnet. This is how a VPN or an open VPN plays a very important role in many of the companies to connect you to the private instances that is running inside the private subnet. Okay. That's all about this video. As a prerequisite, I just want to tell you that you should have a private subnet. Again, if you don't know how to create a private subnet, you can leave this on a comment. I'll try to make a video of it, but I am assuming you're aware of it. And then you deploy an EC2 instance with OpenVPN from the Marketplace AMI. 
and then configure it and then you can connect to this open vpn using uh, your normal username and password to your private ip one thing to note here guys is that because you're using a marketplace ami you might be charged a bit it is not significant but if you're practicing this lab you might be build uh, a build a bit so you should be careful that and or careful and aware that you will be uh, incurring some cost over here well that's all for today's video if you are interested in more such videos or topics related to aws leave them in the comment section below it's the first time i'm making these kinds of videos so if there are any mistakes you can let me know i'll try to correct it also if you need a career level up understanding what cloud engineering means is it suitable for me uh, i need to basically understand if it's really worth if i take the training i can offer you a free demo session where we will just have a career level up it is nothing to do with learning aws it's just an open discussion of you asking me some questions on is it really right to me to change my domain and jump into cloud or understanding about cloud and if it is good right so well i hope you learned something new and uh, it was very nice sharing this video with you guys. I'll see you soon for the future videos. Thank you.